What is up, guys? Today on the Football Guys Dynasty Football Show, we're doing a mock, but a real NFL mock. So we're going to go first round. We dived in picks, we rotated, um, and it was a lot of fun. Got some fun, spicy picks here on this NFL mock draft. 32 picks given to you. So 101, we gave it to Jeff. As always, the oldest guy starts us off. So Jeff, where did you go at the 101 for the Chicago Bears? The Bears selected Caleb Williams in the 101 in this. And, um, you know, I have somebody that I've been on Justin Fields for a long time, and I still believe in Justin Fields. But at the same time, um, one of the things that I look at, Bill Simmons is somebody that I really enjoy quite a bit. And he talks about point guards. He talks about taking things off the table and, and who can have the most things on the table when it comes to a point guard. And at some point, Justin Fields is taking really a lot of the passing game off the table when it comes to becoming a NFL franchise quarterback. The Bears are at a position where they kind of, I think it's just time to hit the reset here and build in a different direction with Caleb Williams, the strengths that he can give them. And so I made that selection. You know, this, we didn't play out a trade for Justin Fields, but I do think that he will go somewhere. My expectation would be it would be a conditional pick because that's usually what we see on these quarterback trades. Something like if wherever he's going is a, top 25 pick or something like that it, it goes to a second or a third and if it ends up being a deep playoff run then maybe it becomes a first something like that is would might would be my expectation a forward-looking pick and and that's what i see the bears moving on from him resetting under caleb williams and really opening up more of their playbook and the the potential to have more of a vertical passing attack and a lot of these other things that timing routes and those types of things that play into caleb's game quite a bit more yeah, I, I want to caution people that I don't think this decision is 100% made yet. Uh, there's still a lot of evaluating to happen. Uh, Kayla Williams hasn't even met Ryan Poles because the new league year hasn't started yet, unless they're doing things illegally, which you never know in the NFL. I've heard stories about how that can be the case, but uh, I, I do think that this is kind of the direction that everyone's leaning. I think there's still an argument to be made to to kind of trade back. If Washington gets super hungry for Caleb Williams and you can move back one spot, uh, maybe they are super into Drake May and maybe that's the, the pivot. Maybe it's not they're in love with Caleb. Maybe they're in love with Caleb and Drake, mm -hmm. or maybe they move back one spot, take Marvin Harrison Jr. I think there's still arguments for those things, but the contract thing is a, a Big deal. I mean, Justin Fields, you have to exercise his fifth year option at this point. You also have to start to structure a, a, a long term extension for him, because if yeah. you trade out of this pick, you have to commit to Justin Fields. So I think with all that being said, we collectively believe that Caleb Williams is a very, very good quarterback. I know it's we're getting to the depths of draft season if you're on social media and you're seeing some there, there are some knocks to his game that are getting just highlighted to the the highest level. Um, but Caleb Williams to me is still the best quarterback prospect since Andrew Luck. And so I think when you start to put that into perspective, it makes sense for Chicago to move in that direction. You've got extra assets. I think ultimately they could get a second round pick this year and maybe a third round pick. It could be one of those conditionals, but I, I did see that, you know, one of the teams linked to Justin Fields is the Atlanta Falcons. The Atlanta Falcons might get a second round pick from the Jacksonville Jaguars if Calvin Ridley decides to resign in Jacksonville. And so they will have an extra second round pick. They can kind of throw that, kind of fix their quarterback situation. I think it's important to note that this means that Caleb Williams and Justin Fields will be starting next year. I, I, I still think Justin Fields is going to start somewhere next year. Um, so from a dynasty perspective, I wouldn't panic on him, uh, but Caleb Williams goes to a spot where he can kind of flourish. The Shane Waldron offense is perfect for him. Yeah, and Fields' is, uh, ADP right now is QB12 in Superflex overall this last January. So when you're looking at ADP there, that's pretty appropriate. I mean, you're concerned where he's going to go, but I think it's a value too, though, because if he does start right away, we've seen him kind of put up those numbers with his rushing top six guy. So if you could pair him with another guy as well in terms of that, you know, those first five picks that we've kind of talked about in, in that range, it's not bad there. Now, before we move on to Caleb, I want to talk to you guys about where you think he's going to go. If he goes to the Bears, do we draft him at 101? Of these five spots, Jeff, what's your favorite spot for Justin Fields? Falcons, Patriots, Raiders, Seahawks, Steelers. If you had to pick one of those teams for him to go to, where would you go? So the Falcons, Patriots, Raiders, Seahawks, or Steelers? 
The Falcons. Um, I, I think okay. narratively, you know, he's he's a guy, he's an Atlanta guy. And so I think that them coming home and kind of closing that loop and, you know, he started out at the University of Georgia before he transferred. So I, I think narratively it's great having him there with Drake London and Kyle Pitts. Bijan Robinson is quite a bit of fun. Having Zach Robinson come in as the new offensive coordinator, I think it's going to be an interesting scheme that he can excel in. And so I think that that's the fit there. Seattle's interesting, um, but at the mm-hmm. same time, I think it's messy with uh, Geno Smith still there. And, and I don't know if you'd have to move Geno Smith out or what would happen there. Um, the pieces there, Jackson Smith and Jigway played with, I believe, yeah, he did play with him one year. Just, I think it was 2020 that COVID year. Um, but other than that, I think that the Falcons are the most interesting landing spot. Yeah, I think the Seahawks would be fun because of Ryan Grubb. Ryan Grubb is a fantastic offensive coordinator yeah. from University of Washington. I think it'd be a lot of fun for him to go there. I'd probably put the CX, 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 Seahawks right there, That kind of that Team 1, Team 2 area with the Falcons. Christian, if Caleb goes to the Bears, 101 overall in rookie draft, Superflex? Yeah, yeah, he's he's the 101 any way you spin it for me. Um, I, you know, I, I think the bears with Shane Waldron are going to be substantially better uh, from an offensive scheme perspective. And so you can look at the faults of Luke Getzey. That's so to the previous question, keep Justin Fields away from Luke Getzey in Las Vegas, please. I just don't want to see that continue because <laughs> we, we know that that doesn't always work. Um, but I think when you look at what this new offense should look like, they have the ability to go get some more weapons. I think, you know, as we go through this mock draft, they have ability to go get some more protection for Caleb Williams, which is a requirement for him to be immediately yeah. productive, I think. Um, but yeah, one on one either way for me. All right, let's dive into the rookie guy. Remember, rookie guy, you know, what we did here is we wrote about 152 players for you guys already. And so we dived into that. Go check that out at footballguys.com slash rookie guide. Uh, we will have a version 2.0 after the combine, version 3.0 after the draft. Uh, but go check it out. It's free. You might as well just dive in there, give your email. It's free and it's out there for you guys to kind of learn about all of the players heading in there. But before we move on also to the rest of this mock, make sure you like this video, subscribe to the channel so you never miss an episode. Um, and comment below. What do you guys think about that fit? Are you comfortable with Caleb Williams at the 101? Where do you want to see Justin Fields go? Let us know in the comments. Also, be sure to head to footballguys.com forward slash plans to get a premium subscription. Elite subscribers get custom dynasty, IDP, salary cap, and best ball content for less than $70 annually. Head to footballguys.com forward slash plans to join today. This is how you will get that third version of the rookie guide. And the other thing too, is if you downloaded the rookie guide right away, one, first off, we appreciate you Two, There's a fix out. I, I, I messed up the Malik neighbors pay, page. So if you've got questions about that, um, he certainly didn't catch 362 touchdowns when he was at LSU. Um, we had did fix that. Page. <laughs> I would love that. That would be, that would be some record breaking stuff. That would be there. a record. Um, all right, let's uh, let's dive into this. Let's talk about it here. Um, I have the number two pick with Washington Commanders. As much as I wish they continue to just do things poorly, um, I did have them draft a quarterback in this one. Drake May, a quarterback out of UNC. You know, a lot of talk about Drake May out there in fantasy right now in terms of what he can be. What I do know what he is, is he's got good arm strength, ability to fit the ball in tight windows. You know, and Christian did a great job in the guy kind of breaking him down there. Um, I think he's really good pre-snap. And then, you know, I think that thing that always stood out to me about may was tools fitting in this scheme i like the fact that he has good weapons around him offensive line is not terrible i think the Washington the commander's offensive line was serviceable there um but the weapons you know you need to think about Jahan dotson scary terry i think they're going to go target a tight end in this draft i think their running back room brian robinson chris rodriguez whatever they do with gibson coming back like it's a pretty solid roster around drake may i think they go quarterback i didn't take have him take Jaden daniels i think that's going to be the really the topic of discussion as we go into this uh but i'll take drake may there they need a quarterback i think you take that qv that you feel like could have a very safe floor um and is maybe has some of the best tools in the class in terms of the quarterback position so i'll take them uh jeff what do you think about that pick I, real quick, what do you think the odds are that Caleb Williams forces his way to Washington? Given that he's a Washington guy, given the addition of Kling, K- Cliff Kingsbury as the offensive coordinator, where do you, where are you in my your mind is you think he's going to have to exert some influence? I think that that question should be framed. Uh, what are how high are the odds that Caleb Williams's dad does that? Because yeah. That is uh, a real thing uh, that is now being reported on. 
that I think could come into play. Um, I've it, it, there's too much behind it to to discredit it completely. Uh, that said, I think Caleb is comfortable anywhere. If you follow uh, on Bears Twitter specifically or X, whatever you want to call it, it's still Twitter. Um, Caleb Williams has been liking Bears tweets, whether it's about the McCaskey family, whether it's about uh, the Hall of Fame inductees. He is kind of actively making his way into Bears fandom. Um, and so I think that's kind of an indication that he wants to just be the number one overall pick and he knows that Chicago has it. I don't think he cares. I think his dad might care, though, which mm-hmm. is slightly problematic. And I just want to say the Cliff Kingsbury thing is a little overblown. He was there for one year. Like, and I don't necessarily. And the offense was worse with him. Was terrible. Like, how it much did they really bad. talk? Like, I, I don't know, like, how much, it's like, Cliff. Due to the Lincoln Riley stuff. I mean, the, the Lincoln Riley, Cliff Kingsbury, you know, they're they're tied together. It's all, um, yeah. I yeah. mean, and Lincoln's not his coach, so. Yeah, I don't know. I just think it's a little overrated in terms of like, oh, well, they were there for a little bit. I mean, you know, Cliff was running a really bad offense in Arizona the last couple of years, in my opinion. And so, yeah. like, you know, I think they figured that out. You know, I'd rather go to Chicago with Raldron in those areas, too, if I was him. I think from that standpoint, I'd be all about that. It's fair. We got to talk about Drake May. It's it's fair to talk about him too. But he very, I think he's a very toolsy quarterback. I think this would be a very nice landing spot for him in terms of fantasy production. I think it would be a very nice spot for fantasy. Um, I would hope he sur- would survive. I and mean, we saw the hits that Sam Howell took uh, this past year, and then we know that offensive or that defense, unless Dan Quinn can work some sort of magic, that that's going to be a struggle too. So that's going to leave him in shootout scenarios where you know defenses are selling out to come after him, which I don't know is exactly a good spot for where he is developmentally and what he needs to improve yeah quickly some of his you know things to work on he's his release is a little low uh he brings the ball down pretty low which can be problematic if he starts to hold the ball his footwork is kind of an atrocity right now it's it has been for two years he really hasn't gotten uh to the point where he needs to be at this moment but of course this is the offseason. When Drake May comes out at the NFL Combine, we might see sharp footwork, an improved release. Like that happens in this time of year where we're not seeing them play. So, um, but good pick. I think he's the right pick. I, well, you're going to see Jane Daniels a lot. That's kind of consensus at this point. I think Drake May is the correct pick here. Uh, number three, I'm on the clock with the New England Patriots. And speaking of quarterbacks, I'm not going quarterback here. Uh, we didn't have any trades. We uh, joked about doing them. Uh, we did not end up doing any trades in this mock draft. So I, I kind of think New England is moving out of the third overall pick for someone to move up for a quarterback. That's kind of the prime spot. But I'm taking Joe Alt, the offensive tackle from Notre Dame here. The Patriots, Trent Brown has declined severely, and he's like, 55 years old or something like that Uh, you know don't quote me on that but pretty close uh they need to get a bookend offensive tackle if they want to continue being the patriots that we've known them to be which is a they're a physical team they like to run the ball but they give good protection for their quarterback this is not a team ready for a rookie quarterback and so when you start to put all of those pieces together certainly if they fall in love with one of the other quarterbacks that could be a a route to getting one but to me you start to build the foundation before you drop a rookie quarterback in as we see in Chicago with Justin Fields Uh, and so this Joe Alt pick kind of fixes kind of kills two birds with one stone as you know you can go get maybe a day two quarterback or you can go get a veteran that can handle some of that stuff Uh, so offensive tackle is the move here for me if they don't make a noticeable additions and especially in weapons and offensive line and going through the draft, going through the free agency process, and they do draft one of these quarterbacks, does that devalue them in one of these quarterbacks in your mind? Are you worried about, about developmentally? Are you worried about the support system there? Um, I'm optimistic with Alex Van Pelt there because I think that there's this new regime. I, I think that there's, potential for uh, minimizing some of those weaknesses that we've seen from Mac Jones, Bailey Zappi. Um, so if they if they do drop a rookie into this situation, I think free agency is going to be a big part of that. They've got a lot of resources, and, and that's important. But I still think they can accumulate more resources, trade back from this pick, maybe still take a quarterback, and then you're setting yourself up a lot better. 
All right, Jeff, go ahead. You're at 104 uh, Arizona. So Arizona taking Marvin Harrison Jr. And I think when, when you really look at Marvin his, Harrison Jr., the strengths of his games, um, yeah, I think attacking vertically, I think the intermediate areas are really the standout areas for him. Um, short game, he can contribute there as well, definitely. But I do think that that's the way his game plays the best. And really, when you're looking at that Drew Penzig offense and having the emergence of Trey McBride last year, kind of look at what Cleveland did last year with Amari Cooper and with David Njoku, the way that they funneled targets. I think you can apply a lot of that to Marvin Harrison Jr. and Trey McBride following targets Mm -hmm. kind of in that Cooper role where we saw Cooper work a lot more intermediate, a lot more vertically down the field, and then Joku up the seam and and over the middle and those types of areas. And I think that you could see similar distribution going to Harrison Jr. and uh, Trey McBride. I do expect Hollywood Brown to no longer be a Cardinal. I think that he's a free agent, and that is one that I think actually could move. So I think coming in here and, and taking Marvin Harrison Jr., kind of pairing him with McBride for the future and, and just making that pick. This is a seamless fit. This is a good fit. I think I would love this fit for Harrison in terms of fantasy. I think it easily locks him in at 102. And in some leagues, maybe 101, depending on what the quarterback situation looks to those teams there. Um, I, I love it. I love him. And, Kyle, and, and if you have Kyler Murray, it helps. Like if you, I think Kyler Murray going QB 13 ish right now in ADP and startups, like, man, I, I might get on that train. If you get Marvin Harrison jr. And McBride rushing upside an offense that had improved last year. Uh, and you saw that you see a team kind of building an identity as well. That's good. Like these are the things that you want when you're looking at your assets there. Like I think Arizona's offense is sneaky. I think they're going to add a running back too. They're going to add a running back day three, and you're going to want that running back as well because you see James Conner, depending on what goes on there. Like these are kind of the pieces that you're looking at. Um, A lot of fun there. Anything on uh, Harrison Christian before we move on? He's a stud. He is a stud. You know, I I think he's landing spot independent for the most part. And this is, but this is still a great landing spot for him. So I, I will say I'm seeing some stuff about Harrison that I don't like. Like, oh, it's just his dad. Um, I've seen some stuff like that, you know, little that things like that. And I think the the thing that you should know about Marvin Harrison for context, because, you know, we've watched these guys for a long time. You know, his freshman year, he came in. He's gained a ton of weight. He put on strength that he needed to do. And his footwork is special. His footwork was special as a freshman. And then it got better. And like you saw that, like he puts in the work. Like Harrison is not at done as a prospect yet. He has so much room to grow still. So like, that's the thing with Harrison. Be careful out there. You know, I just don't like the narratives being thrown around out there. I think Arizona is a great landing spot for him. Um, All right. 105. I have the Chargers. I have the Chargers here. I I, I wanted to have some fun. So I went here. I do think with Harbaugh, you know, I wanted Joe Alt here in this spot, but then, you know, Christian took him. Unfortunately, I do think that they could go offensive line. I also think at this spot, they might move back a little bit, depending on maybe Dave Daniel still being there on the board. Like they might kind of look at it, see, collect some assets and go there. But standing pat, I took Brock Bowers from Georgia. Um, and the reason why I did this is one, Harbaugh loves tight ends. Greg Roman loves tight ends. Like they're going to utilize him in different ways. I think it's a fun spot for him getting tied with Herbert, being essentially the wide receiver two on this roster. I think him and Keenan Allen and possibly wide receiver one. Allen, you know, with his, you know, I, I wouldn't say his old hamstrings, but they're getting a little creakier out there like me. Um, you know, he doesn't necessarily maybe not finish a full season. You get Brock Bowers in there. I think that they can use, utilize him in different ways. I think Brock Bowers is underrated. You know, I think he can block. I don't think he's like terrible. I know he looks like, you know, he's an interesting picture that's going around out there in cargo shorts, but I think he knows the game really well. I think they can utilize him in different ways. I love this landing spot for fantasy. I think it's a good spot for him in terms of just where he's at. Now, the Chargers might want to go different direction depending on what they need. Like Malik Neighbors is still out there. You know, Olu Fashanu is still out there. Look at that. I pronounced that name right. So there's guys like that that are still out there that they could grab. Um, but I took Brock Bowers. and I'm okay with that. What do you think, Christian? Good uh, fit for him. I, I do think that offensive line is I know not a necessity, but I think their right tackle situation is problematic right now. So I, you know, I've written a few mocks. I've, I've trended that way, but I've also heard rumblings from uh, people covering the chargers that it, it could be a skill position uh, and it probably would be Bowers if it is because Harrison jr. Will be gone. So um, no, I mean, I think Harbaugh would use him well. I think that's a, a good fantasy landing spot. I think that puts him firmly in that first tier in rookie drafts. Like we talked about 
yeah. uh, during our mock draft. I think that's one of the landing spots that, you know, just solidifies that. Go ahead, Jeff. Is there, when you're looking at Malik neighbor still on the board and if there are legitimate concerns yeah. long-term about the wide receivers for the chargers, do you think there's, you know me, I'm a big tight end guy, but do you think there's really the positional value relative to the way that wide receivers valued across the league to pass neighbors and go with Bowers? I think it just depends on how the fit is, right? Or what they want to do offensively. But if you look what Harbaugh and those guys like to do offensively, they really run a lot of stuff through the tight end position. So like maybe yeah. for their system, right? Their scheme, mm -hmm. they look at it that way. And then they're like, Hey, I can grab one of these wide receivers in the second or third round. Possibly if it's a lot of people are saying this wide receiver class is deep. I don't know how deep it is with like game changing players. Like you got to I think there's like question marks there. All those guys are going in the first round or like before yeah. the top 50 are gone. And then yeah. and then it's like, OK, we've got some guys that we kind of like. The other part of that is, you know, I think the Chargers wide receiver room. I a I don't think Mike Williams is going to be in it. His cap hits too big. He's one of those cap casualty, uh, you know, candidates at this point. But. I think they like Josh Palmer a lot. And I think, well, you know, the former regime did, but I think that when they get in the building, they are also going to like Josh Palmer a lot because of the things that he does that fit Harbaugh's system and, and what Roman wants to do as well. So I think that kind of helps them bridge that gap where their tight end room is pretty rough right now. Yeah. And, but, and he did have yeah. Vernon Davis when he was in San Francisco. And I think that there are um, maybe stylistically the way they would be used, used in an NFL offense, some similarities between Brock Bowers and Vernon Davis. Yeah. All right. I'm up here at the 106. The New York Giants are here uh, and I'm having them take Jaden Daniels. And before all the Giants fans or, uh, you know, the NFL fans are pretty upset when they see a mock draft with the Giants taking a quarterback. A Daniel Jones has neck issues. There's legitimate risk throwing him out there uh, to be their franchise guy. B, he is on the books for one more season. And then there is a massive cap savings on his contract he is essentially on a one-year deal and it's only in 2024 obviously that does extend but the cap hit in 2026 is 47 and a half million you cannot pay daniel jones that kind of money i know it stinks that he might have lost his job because of an injury but that's how the nfl works so Jaden daniels comes in i think he brings a different dynamic to what they want to do while retaining some of that rushing quarterback upside that I think if Brian Dable is keeping his job, he can attach himself to Daniel Jones. So Jane Daniels, better, better outlook moving forward. Also, I think this gives Daniel Jones a chance to, you know, heat him off, leave Daniels on the bench for a little while, but I don't think that would last very long personally. Go ahead. What do you think? I love this pig. I think it's spicy and I like that <laughs> the ball and Daniels could be really good together. I think, I think that's a great pairing. I think with their ability, kind of his coaching ability, I know Jeff wants him back in Buffalo, um, but like his ability to kind of help quarterback play, I think he'd be able to develop in there. And the Giants have some weapons, not enough yet. Like they got to go get some guys, but I do think that that would be a fun spot. And I, if I'm them, if I'm that coaching staff too, I want my guy. I think they can say all the nice things they want about Daniel Jones, but I think they realize he's not the guy. And I think coming off the injury, he's not the guy either. So I, I like going here. I think this is a fun, sneaky spot here. Yeah, short of somebody coming up and getting Daniels, I don't know that he moves past this pick potentially. So I would like him a lot more with the Giants than I would with the Patriots or with the Commanders probably. Yeah, I, I, I agree too. All right, Jeff, Tennessee, you're going to piss some people off. Where you got at number seven? <laughs> I'm going to ruin everybody's dreams in fantasy football <laughs> and have Malik neighbors go to the Tennessee Titans. I mean, I, the value's there, I think, at that pick. I think when you have Will Levis, I think that you want to pair him with a player like neighbors. Obviously, they brought in DeAndre Hopkins because they needed a starting NFL wide receiver, and they gave him a lot of volume. So kind of long term and having neighbors there, I think they're probably calling uh, the addition of Hopkins, but also the way the season played out probably leads them to call um, trail on Burks, call a spade a spade there and, and say, we really need to get a number one guy for our young quarterback and neighbors is an easy yeah. pick here there. I do want to take a moment and say, if you're not plugged into what's kind of the way this draft is transpiring and you might take a 
this and say, well, these are fantasy guys. They're just selecting wide receivers and quarterbacks because they're fantasy guys. That That's where the value lies in the strats. And you're going to see that in the top 10. I think that, and that kind of solidifies, we've talked about before those top six, seven picks in uh, super flex. You're going to, and you're going to see those guys go quickly in the draft because the depth really isn't there at the edge class or there's no really cornerback pushing towards the top there and even offensive tackle Christian took Joe all there's good offensive tackles but there's not one of those guys that you have to absolutely get and so I think you'll see quarterbacks and wide receivers fly off the board in this class which will be exciting for fantasy except if you're upset with the landing spot of having Malik neighbors go to the Tennessee Titans yeah so my I don't have like a gripe with this and I just, I want to talk about landing spot because okay. Malik neighbors goes to the Tennessee Titans and everyone's like, Oh, he's on the Titans, a new offensive system coming in. Uh, we've yep. got a whole new situation. Uh, B he's walking into a ton of targets because there's really nothing there. So you're walking into a great situation. Uh, I think, you know, even if they don't go wide receiver here, I think they have to, in the second round. And so whatever wide receiver ends up in Tennessee, I think you should feel pretty good about. And I know it's Will Levis and and things like that, but you, good players still perform. DJ Moore had four different quarterbacks before he got to Chicago, I think, and he was always a, a top 24-ish guy. So I think Malik Neighbors is a better prospect than DJ Moore. I think he's got big playability. This is a great pick, Jeff. I like it. Man, the DeAndre Hopkins disrespect. You better not let him hear that yeah. out there with his PEDs. He's, He's going to come ancient. whoop your butt. Um, but yeah, I, I I think, yeah, Tennessee, I think this is okay. I don't know if I love the spot, but I do think if this happened, I think Brock Bowers and tight end premium might go ahead of the league neighbors, maybe possibly in some rookie drafts, depending on how big the premium is. Um, and that's just the reality of, I think, the situation when we get in landing spots that's there. All right. Pick eight, I got a defensive player for y'all because, you know, Jeff just said we're just fantasy dudes. Um, but I got Dallas Turner, Edge, going to the Falcons um, at, at the eighth overall pick. I like Turner. Again, I am not necessarily like a deep dive into these defensive guys. Um, I'm just starting to get into that process, but I know he's versatile and I know he's a dog. That is my analysis there. I'm sure Christian could talk to you about him a little bit more than that, but I know he's versatile and I know Atlanta could use an edge. And I honestly think if they go get a quarterback somewhere else, they go get fields, they go get one of these guys, Kirk Cousins type guys, you know, getting those defensive playmakers on the other side of the ball is where they really need to go because they already have the offensive guys. They just need the quarterback. They need the driver out there. Um, and I think that when you're looking at it, Turner gives them that. Um, a la kind of what Houston had last year in the draft when they kind of looked at it. So Anderson, those type of guys, I think Turner can give them that guy. How far am I off, Christian? No, that's right. He's my edge one. Uh, okay. He just turned 21 this month. Uh, which is a big thing, and and you'll start to get into some of the ed other edge rushers. They're pushing uh, age wise, and some teams don't like to draft older. Dallas Turner also good, great athleticism with probably the best bend of these top guys, I would say. And so when you look at how Atlanta has failed in the past, they've gone with small guys with bend. This is a big guy with bend, and and he's got some power mm -hmm. too. He can set the edge. He's really good in run defense. Uh, like I said, my edge one, I think he should be a top 10 pick. All right. Yeah. Go ahead, Jeff. I was going to say, I, I cover the Falcons for football guys, the training camp reports over the last three years, and they've really struggled to address that edge position. They've had to bring in veterans to just try to get bodies there. And so I think this is a really good pick, Kevin. All right. Look at that. All right, Christian, you're at number nine with your team, Chicago. Yeah, so I'm going in a kind of a strange direction here and something that I just wanted to mock drafts are supposed to be fun and mock drafts are supposed to explore different possibilities in the draft. And one possibility that really doesn't get explored is that the Bears say, OK, we're moving off of Justin Fields. That hasn't really worked out. But also we're moving off of Braxton Jones at left tackle because he was part of the reason that uh, Justin Fields had some struggle. Now, Braxton Jones has played really well for a fifth round pick. But when you have to put that four or fifth round pick on there, there's certainly room for improvement. Olufashanu here at number nine, offensive tackle from Penn State. This is a player that doesn't necessarily fit the uh, Luke Getze, I want to run the football a million times type of offense. Shane Waldron also likes to run the ball, but Olufashanu is one of those guys that you can throw him on an island at, at left tackle and you're feeling good about your quarterback not getting hit because his technique is so refined. He's strong. 
Um, he anchors well for the most part. He's got room to grow, but they showed us last year with Darnell Wright that they like toolsy types of tackles. I'm going that direction here. I think the reason I'm going that direction is the two players that I think they would want are Malik Neighbors and Brock Bowers in this situation. They're both off the board, so I went with tackle here uh, to give Caleb Williams his blindside protection. With a second year at right tackle, you're feeling good about that situation if you're Chicago. I'm going to ask the Bears fan real quick. Do you think that they could get aggressive and go up and get um, one of those guys to be a weapon for Caleb Williams? Um, I think in most scenarios, one of those guys is going to be available. <clears throat> but I so in that sense, yes, I think that I think wide receivers should be the move. The, their wide receiver room is going to look disgusting when we sit down and Darnell Mooney left. Uh, Valus Jones is the wide receiver three behind Tyler Scott, who's the wide receiver two. They obviously have room to to play with that in free agency, but this free agent class of wide receivers isn't super strong. I don't think they're trading for one of these top names. And so when you start to say that, see all of that, and you see what Shane Waldron needed with you know Tyler Scott, DK Metcalf, uh, and Jackson Smith and Jigba last year, the Chicago doesn't have that. So yes, I think they kind of need to do that. It's a bummer that they were the neighbors and, and Bowers were both gone here in Harrison Jr. Technically, I've seen some crazy Bears takes where the Bears move up to three after taking Caleb at one uh, with their extra draft picks. But they're not going to do that. I don't think sadly. Houston did it last year, so they did. Well, for a That'd dominant edge, I don't know if. I remember when Harrison hey, Jr. is a dominant blue chip. Well, okay, that's fair. Premium yeah, position. Okay. So, yeah, that's fair. And I they would have like a, that. They have a lot of cap room. So if they, if Chicago is able to use that cap room, maybe go address that other side of the ball, then maybe they do that, something like that crazy. All right, Jeff, round out the top 10 for us. Who you got taking? The Jets taken. Roma Dunze, the wide receiver from Washington. Again, fantasy guy making a fantasy selection. But I think when you look at the Jets lineup, he fits that Shanahan style very well. I think what he can do after the catch and his physicality coming to that wide receiver position, they're kind of all in. They were all in last year, but now with Aaron Rodgers being back and they're kind of at that position where they got to get a weapon opposite Garrett Wilson. We've seen, you know, Alan Lazard's not going to be that guy last year. They were Xavier Gibson was playing like Jason Brownlee, these guys that um, I kind of like them a little bit, but if you don't want long-term to be your wide receiver too. And I do like a Dunze's game quite a bit pairing that with Garrett Wilson. If you're going to be all in and push with Aaron Jones or Aaron Rodgers being your quarterback. Hopefully Aaron Jones isn't their quarterback after another Aaron Rodgers injury, but uh, no, that's a good pick. I, I, I think that they can address their offensive line a little bit in free agency. And I think that this is one of those other scenarios, like a tackle to Chicago where people just aren't considering it enough. Um, I think people, people have clear pictures of what is going to happen in the draft until about draft night and none of that happens. So um, it's always important to get different scenarios in here. Uh, that's it for the YouTube version of this show. So the full version of every show can be found on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or anywhere you get your podcast. We have more fantasy picks in this mock draft. The next one is actually a fantasy pick. So go over to your favorite podcast tab. Make sure you search up the Football Guys Dynasty Football Show. Uh, subscribe over there to listen to the rest of this show because it's it's a good one. 